In this lecture, we're going to discuss how the size and structure of our substrate affects the rate of our SN1 reaction. So let's begin by examining the first step, the ionization step, of our SN1 reaction. So let's begin by looking at the following ionization step. So, we have a substrate that dissociates into a carbocation and a leaving group. So what happens is, this pair of electrons simply goes onto our leaving group, forming the following positively charged carbocation and negatively charged leaving group. Now, recall that the more stable our products are, the more likely our reaction will take place in this forward product direction. In other words, the more stable our products are, the more likely that equilibrium will lie towards the product side. So let's compare carbocation stability of the methyl primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, molecules. So let's talk about the heat or formation in the gas state of all of these carbocations. So if we examine the heat or formation of our methyl carbocation, we'll see that it's much higher, it's more positive than the primary, secondary, or tertiary. In fact, as we go up from tertiary to methyl carbocations, our heat of formation becomes more positive. And recall that the more positive our heat of formation is, the more unstable our molecule is. So stability decreases as we go from tertiary to prime to a, a methyl and increases as we go from methyl to tertiary. So that means our methyl carbocations are less stable than primary, which are less stable than our secondary and in turn less stable than our tertiary. So that means if we take our methyl and compare it to our tertiary, if we place a methyl in here and then we place a tertiary and we compare the rates of reaction, this reaction with the tertiary will be much more likely. Why? Well, because our products, our product intermediate carbocation is much more stable. In fact, methyl and primary carbocations do not undergo SN1 reactions because the carbocations is rel are relatively unstable. Likewise, secondary and tertiary carbocations are much more stable and hence undergo SN1 reactions. Now, let's ask the main question. Why is this the case? Why is it that this second or this primary is more stable than our methyl? Well, let's take our primary and let's compare it to our methyl carbocation. So notice that in the primary carbocation, we have these sp3 hybridized orbitals, hybridized bonds between the carbon and the H. So let's take this single sp3 hybridized CH bond as an example. Notice that we have our two electrons in this sp3 hybridized bond. So we have a field sp3 hybridized bond. And here I have an empty 2p orbital. So what will happen? Well, when the carbocation is attached to this alkyl group, in this case the methyl group, there is a stabilizing interaction between the filled orbital of this CH bond, the sp3 hybridized orbital, which is also known as the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, and the empty 2p orbital of this carbon, known as the LUMO, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So there's this Lewis acid base interaction between these two orbitals, and this is stabilizing, and this is known as hyperconjugation. So hyperconjugation is a stabilizing effect. Now, the more alkyl groups we have, the more stabilizing the hyperconjugation effect. So that means as we go from our primary to our tertiary, the more substituted we become and the more of these hyperconjugated bonds we have. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that the more substituted the carbocation, the more stable it is. Therefore, SN1 reactions take place when tertiary and secondary carbocations are formed from the first ionization step. So the more stable this is, the more likely our SN1 reaction will take place. 
Now, SMR reactions are very, very unlikely to occur when primary carbocations are formed because they're relatively unstable and they never or almost never take place with the methyl substrate because they're so unstable compared to these three carbocations. So whenever we deal with primary or a methyl carbocations, we usually have SM2 reactions taking place. Whenever we're dealing with secondary and tertiary, we usually deal with SN1 reactions. And we'll talk more about that in a future lecture when we compare SN1 and SN2 reactions.